Welcome back to LT Research. Today, we've got the first in a series where we're taking a look at military ammunition for the 5.56 caliber. Right here, we have M193. This is going to be our first test today. This is just standard 55 grain 5.56 ball. It's kind of actually an impressive round, and you'll see that here today, but it's also very velocity dependent. So, we also are going to have coming up standard M855 we're going to test. We're going to test some of that 77 grain open tip match. And then, of course, we're going to wrap it up with this little bugger here. M855A1. Got some of the pulled bullets that we're going to assemble up and see how they perform. I have a feeling they're going to be quite spectacular from everything I've heard. But, to give you an overview of our testing, what we are doing is we are shooting. The day we actually did this testing was 80 degrees Fahrenheit and we were at 1100 feet above sea level just so you have a basic calibration for what to expect out of these. Now, for our testing procedures, we're using four different ARs of four different lengths. Now, to get an overall velocity before we start, we did five rounds through an 18-inch barrel using a magneto speed chronograph and a light chronograph, which is basically the standard chronograph. So, we took the chronograph that is the standard one was set up at 10 yards. The magneto speed obviously gets you the muzzle. I'll drop in the data right here. Now what you will see is they pretty much agree. You're looking at about 3190 feet per second, give or take. So you got 3193 at 10 yards, 3196 is the muzzle. Now we haven't taken these out to a couple hundred yards to true the chronograph. So these are just kind of ballpark figures for you to play with. But the 10 yard one is right in front of the gel block. So we will have an approximate velocity as measured by the chronograph for when it goes into the gel. We did have one issue today where we did not pick up the shot at the 10 and a half inch barrel. We did not get a velocity off that. But we did take a few other shots to get an average velocity for that round and that's what we'll drop in on that footage. So. The 14 and a half inch is just a standard M forgery to comply with US law that's pinned and welded with, I believe it's a YHM battle comp. It's not my gun, so I can't say for sure. I was using it, other Matt's gun. Now here we have our 10 and a half inch. Now all four of these guns are a 5.56 chamber. The 18 and a half inch is a one and eight twist. The rest of these are a one and seven. So this is our 10 and a half on a pistol lower. Then we're going to swap that out. For this upper on the same lower, this is a seven and a half inch barrel. We're gonna take all shots out of these and get the velocity speed from the chronograph right in front of the gel to get an average impact velocity that I built up some ballistics charts back from that to see how far out can we expect good ballistic data. Now remember, 10% ordnance gel is not going to be directly analogous to hitting a human. What it is analogous to is muscle hits. So if it was 16 inches of muscle tissue, that's more or less what it would look like. Bones and a lot of other things will play into factors on these, so we can't say this is exactly what your terminal performance is going to look like. What we are trying to find today is what velocity does the 5.56 round no longer yaw and shatter. So we have done this test a couple of times. We've done it twice. Once we did it with some pulled Hornady, well, we did it once with some Hornady Full Metal Jacket 55 grain bullets here. I'll drop in a picture here. Now you'll notice one of them's got a little black lacquer across it. That is actually M193 from Lake City 2017 that we have pulled. And we loaded those up in a download. And in all honesty, even though you'll notice visibly there's a difference, especially where the jacket comes together with the lead at the base of the bullet. While there is a large difference between the two, the terminals are actually almost identical. It's kind of insane that way. So we will show a little bit of footage of the Hornady one, mostly because we had one of those shatter and we were able to capture the bullet before it left the block. Otherwise, most of everything else you'll see is going to be done with the Lake City. Now, for the actual Lake City loaded rounds we did for the initial shots on the chronograph, and through the four barrel lengths, the initial shots, those were all taken with Lake City 2009. So this is actual Lake City bullets loaded up by Lake City 
the year 2009. Just put that in perspective for you. So let's get off and take a look at what the terminal performance is on these rounds. We've got some really massive on this block, if I can see it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a nasty the, wound cavity. The tear goes all the way to the top yeah. and exits. It is the entire height of the block and then some for yep. the wound. And of course, bullet came out right here on the back. Uh-huh. Oh, there's chunks of jacket. Yep. So, we can confirm here that we actually had catastrophic damage here. Yep, it yawed and fragmented. Yep, we had enough velocity here. All right, 14 and a half inch did catastrophic damage as well. And look at that. That just ripped out the side of the block there. It squirted gel out the chunk, out the tear from the first one. Yeah. Look at that. So, the first one, hope I can, I hope you're getting this. First one came in, out that way. 14 and a half came in and out here. The 14 and a half did not exit the end of the block, it came out the side. It looks like it may have fragmented too. Yeah, we've got fragments in there. So it definitely was catastrophic. About it. Oh. All right, 10 and a half inch barrel. Wound cavity is much more severe. And you'll notice here, we've got a chunk. We had a little couple of tears here. It came through and went to the other half of the gel. Just nasty, and we've only got part of the wound cavity here. So it just blew out. So a 10 and a half inch. All right, seven and a half inch. We section this thing out separate. So entrance wound here, exit out the back. You can kind of see the track there. From the top, that's what she looks like. You'll notice there are no fragmented bits in here. Mm -hmm. All it did was cavitate when it flipped. Now, in case any of you are wondering, why aren't we actually showing you this discussion at the range? Well, we did do it there. Too much background noise for it to actually be usable footage. Now, since we've seen what the 18 inch, the 14 and a half, the 10 and a half, the 7 and a half have done, you know something interesting? Seven and a half just yawed. The bullet did not self-destruct. So we now have a low end for where that bullet no longer destructs. So if you have a seven and a half inch barrel, you don't even have 30 feet. It is actually very disturbing. Because what you're looking at is 2395 and the bullet just flips. So 2400 feet per second is below that. Now, Using a ballistic chart, you'll look back on that round. 2428 is the muzzle velocity, according to the ballistics charts. Think about that. You have less than 30 feet, and you don't have a fantastic terminal performance. You have terminal performance, but not fantastic. We had definitely more impact velocity here, and there are fragmentations in there. Uh, there's some stuff up here on top of the block, but in the wound cavity, there are fragments of jacket, and we caught the bullet. All right, we caught it. So, it did not even fully penetrate through the block, unlike all the others, but it seems to be right about the point. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is definite destruction. So, we 
we've got catastrophic here. Beautiful catastrophic damage. We had enough velocity. Alright guys, I'm going to call it here, 2587. So, bullet came in right here, and we've got just one, two little spits of lead off of it. And that's at 2587, and the bullet exited out the back. I think, yeah. Here it is. That right mo, but we missed the jug. Yeah. So right out that farthest side, that track that's the most over, that's where it came out the back. But there's maybe three fragments that came out of it, and the wound is much smaller than previously. So we're gonna call about 25, 50 feet per second. 2600. Interesting. So it took us a bunch of shots to find this, but both the Lake City bullets and the Hornady 55 grain full metal jackets both confirmed. Roughly about 2,500 to 2,550 feet per second is where the bullets stop breaking apart. So, what we're going to call is anything over 2,500 feet per second, most likely the bullet is going to shatter. So, let's go to our ballistics tables. Now, I'm going to drop this in right here. And so, for the 18-inch, if we stimulate that, hey, this round that hit the block which was actually higher velocity than what we saw out of our five shot test. It was on the high end of that. Not the highest, but on the high end. That round stops becoming terminally effective at about 200 yards. It hits 2532 feet per second. Hmm, okay, 200 yards. That's pretty good damage. But that's out of an 18 inch barrel. What happens if you drop to a 14 and a half with your standard M forgery? Well, that got, that starts hitting 2550 to 2516, about 170 to 180 yards. So you're still getting pretty decent out of it. Now down to the 10 and a half inch air. Now mind you, I'm going to post this all here and I'll outline it in red so you can see where the velocity is. But you're looking at 2491 feet per second at 100 yards with that 10 and a half inch barrel. Hmm. That's uh, pretty darn close to what you see out of a seven and a half inch at the muzzle. Not exactly what I would like to see, but you still might have fragmentation. So you're looking at a hundred yards or less with a ten and a half inch. And out of the muzzle of the seven and a half inch, you maybe will have it at almost a direct impact shot. But this, remember, is a 55 grain ball. Now, of course, we're going to drop in one more right here, and this is where we shot a subsonic loading. So we loaded up one round, going about 1,100 feet per second, and you'll be able to see what the terminals look like this. Kind of an interesting cavity. I mean, that's a temporary cavity, so even though when you're getting out there, that's what you expect. Now, I didn't. the video did not come out clear, at least enough to use but I did do some checking and we tested a 124 grain ball out of 9 millimeter going 900 feet per second the wound cavities are almost identical that's for the temporary wound cavity not permanent just temporary and that's kind of what you're looking at at distance but then again bullet choice bullet choice bullet choice we did take a little bit of gel after the we finished filming and we tested a 55 grain soft point out of the same barrels, downloaded the same specs as our downloads, and got better terminal performance. That means your 556, highly dependent on bullet choice. Hmm. What we're going to do, so when we come back, we're going to keep going through a couple of different bullet choices. Next up is M193. We're going to have a very busy September though, and you're going to see a bunch of stuff from Gun Rights Policy Conference post on the channel 
between now and the next time we do one of these, but expect mid to late October, we should have another test of M193. Speaking to a couple of military, former military I know, they're telling me I should expect about 20 inch barrel. Needed to get good terminals out of that. So it might be a real quick test and we can move on to the next two we have lined up, but that's coming in the future. So if you like this kind of stuff and you want us to actually keep producing it, please give us a comment. We'd like to know what you think of this testing. For us, we're doing it because it's really fascinating and we want to know more. But what do you, the viewer, want to see? We are planning some 77 grain open tip match, some M855A1, and then of course standard M855. I've heard terrible things about it, and I've heard fantastic about the A1. But what do you, the viewers, think? And of course, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. If you don't, Write in the comments and tell us why. Tell us something we can improve to make this content better for you. And of course, thanks for watching.